Okay, Dan. So it looks like um, we're getting attendees are coming back on for the afternoon session. So um, for those of you that are rejoining, um, we had an awesome morning. Thanks everybody for being on. Um, this afternoon, we're going to roll through a, a couple different sessions. Uh, we're going to kick off with Mr. Dan from Kern Now. So uh, go ahead, Dan, and uh, let us know what Kern Now is all about. Absolutely. Well, guys, first off, I want to say thank you for giving us the opportunity here to, to join you guys today and talk about some areas such as floor graphics and signage. Um, to give you a little bit of background about Kernow, you know, for the past 40 years, Kernow has been the global leader when it comes to the development of specialized synthetic print media designed to help customers take advantage of their machines in new ways. You know, at the heart of it, we're a chemical company, and we use that science and chemistry knowledge to help develop materials that not only open up new opportunities, but help find, uh, printers find new ways to utilize the machines that they already have in their uh, print and production facilities. Awesome. So, um, you know, you got a lot of materials and we can see the floor shark up there on the screen. So that's, that's awesome. But um, today we're going to talk about disrupting signage. It's kind of a, a term we've coined. And um, how, how do you see that as playing a role in how printers and brand owners uh, use signage? And, you know, Absolutely. We you know, it, and when we look at the signage market, um, you know, there, there's been a lot of changes in the way that the world has functioned over the past few months. You know, if we look at, at everything that we've seen in the industry, um, something as basic as going to the grocery store, right? Going to the grocery store now is completely different than it was a year ago when we went to the grocery store. Uh, retailers are out there trying to find ways to build that sales back. They're trying to get people back into their stores. Product and brand owners are trying to get uh, people to, to look at their brands, look at their opportunities, look at their products as the economy reopens. The stores themselves are looking at um, how do we keep people safe? How do we keep traffic flowing um, in and out of the store safely? How do we keep people social distance? And that's where signage has become so critical. And, and we're trying to develop new ways to disrupt that. You know, if you look at the signage market, it's easy for it to get stagnant. It's the first thing you see when you walk into a store. You're bombarded with window signs that are telling you I need a face mask. You've got sales signs sticking out of shelves. You've got hanging signs that are coming down from the ceiling. So we really wanted to focus on materials and applications that help people uh, understand not only the safety of the environment, but also the brands and products that are trying to get back into the sales condition under the new normal that we've encountered. You know, I was talking with uh, the CEO of one of the world's largest flooring companies here a couple months ago. And even during the pandemic time, they've talked about how they've seen exponential growth inside their business. And I was asking them, you know, how have you gone about that in a condition where, uh, you know, consumers have been scared to go out to retail stores, stores have been shut down. How are you still driving this growth on a very retail centric product? And he said, the big thing for us is all about the signage. You know, when we look at signage in the market, we have to have something that brings people in as an experience and more so now than ever before. You know, in the past, uh, signage was such a, a, a normal factor of what we saw, of what we, you know, when you went in a store, you expected to see certain things with signage. But now, you know, as I talked to him, he's saying, we need people to experience it. It's no longer good enough just to have great print. We need things that bring people in so they can see the sheen. We want people to, to see how light reflects off the sign and catches their eye. We don't want to blend in with everything else. And that's where disruptive signage has really come into play. You know, when we look at the rest of the signage market, you know, it's never been more important for retailers and printers to get into the space. 70% of all buying decisions take place at the store level. And as a result, Retailers and brand owners need signage that grabs attention and changes the way that they focus uh, the customer attention into their space. When you're producing signage for the industry, you have one and a half seconds to grab that attention of that consumer. And again, those materials are what helps drive that. People see that and they make that decision in one and a half seconds. And that's why it's so critical for stores that are coming out of, of the shutdowns that we've been in, they're reopening the economy and they're keeping people safe. Critical signage is delivering that information that we need, whether it's safety information and flowing things through, it's brands that are fighting for attention and they're saying we need to change the way we capture customers coming in. And most importantly, people like new ideas. So what we wanna talk about today is how we help customers change the way they produce things and the materials that we're doing to help customers use their equipment differently and produce things more cost effectively. When we look at the world of signage, 
and what's going on. You know, one of the things that we talk about a lot is floor graphics. And that's because people are now realizing that, that things like floor shark take such a big place and what they're doing. You know, historically, you look at services that we're designing, you know, we're designing things for shelves. We're designing things for backlit signs that grab attention. We're designing things for um, social impact uh, at a level on electronics. But now as people are going into stores and changing, floor graphics and things like floor shark are becoming a bigger, bigger part of that disruption. When we talk about floor graphics, you know, it's a market that's really expanding very, very quickly right now. Um, the obvious thing that we've seen in, in the new normal, if you will, has been the transition into floor and safety signs. And, and we could go forever on, on, you know, social distancing, how people are designing things to keep themselves safe. If you look at retailers, you now have stores that are producing one-way aisles. And that floor graphic is a big part of what helps drive that. But what we want to do is help people understand that the world of floor graphics is more than just social distancing. It's the big buzz right now. It's the thing that, that everyone's focusing on. But what we want to help retailers understand is there's ways to capture new markets out there. And we want printers to understand there's new ways of doing this. So we look at social distancing. We look at things like, like uh, the one-way signage. So if you look here, you see some of our applications of floor shark um, and where we're seeing it in the market. You know, you've got people that are combining floor shark with advertising um, and social distancing. Hey, pay attention to what you're doing here. We see floor shark being used in aisles where uh, customers are going up and down and changing the way customers interact um, and just the overall flow of floor graphics and how it interacts with people. And most importantly, those floor graphics are changing customer buying habits. And that's what we really want to focus on is how it changes buying habits. That's interesting. So when we're talking about, you know, uh, floor shark and disruptive print, um, obviously this is drawn attention to recently, but uh, I love how you say that, um, you know, it's actually outside the pandemic. Uh, it's actually every day that we can use these to, to guide buyer behavior. Absolutely. And that's what makes it so disruptive when you talk specifically to floor graphics is it changes the way people think. And, and we don't realize it, but we are genetically programmed to pay attention to what's on the ground. If you think about it, um, as we walk around, we are every day just walking through the store, walking through outside, we're looking at the ground, we're looking to see are there obstacles? Is there changes in the terrain? Is there a snake I need to pay attention to? And because of all of these things as humans uh, that we've looked for over the years, we've become genetically programmed to pay attention to what's on the ground and let that input from the ground be what changes the way we interact with our environment. We've also all seen this scene, right? Not only have we evolved to, to pay attention to what the ground, but with technology, we walk around, we see a lot of this too, right? People walking around with their phones, they're looking down, they're not looking up, right? People naturally want to look at what's in front of them. They're looking at their phones, they're looking at the sidewalk. Um, as a humorous study, 11% of all pedestrian accidents are actually people looking down at their phones and walking into walls poles and other obstacles they encounter. And so again, it becomes that much more critical that we look at things like floor graphics because it's such an inherent part of who we are as people and it has such a huge impact on everything we perceive. You know, if we look at, at statistics related specifically to floor graphics and what floor graphics do to the way people interact with their environment, business studies have shown that a single floor graphic for a product can increase sales by as much as 30% on average. So as retailers are coming out of uh, their economic shutdowns, they're reopening stores, they're trying to draw attention to their products and boost sales here in the latter half of the year, that 30% increase in sales is a huge jump that comes simply from the four graphics. You know, if I'm a marketer and I'm an advertiser for a brand owner and I'm looking at, at ways that I can change how customers see my products and I want to bring the most value for my dollar that I'm advertising, Additional studies have shown that advertising revenue is best spent on things such as floor graphics. Again, it's that human instinct to take what's on the ground and put that in a higher context than everything else around us. If you look at advertising, when you look at floor graphic advertising, 80% engagement rate with floor graphic advertising versus a 19% for traditional advertising. 
again, as we're coming out, as people are trying to find ways to drive new value, that's a massive number. That's the reason why things like floor graphics can drive as much as a $20 per square foot advertising cost. This is one of my favorite numbers that show just how impactful that, that human instinct is to look at the ground um, and focus on what's in front of us. 280% increase in customers stopping in a given area simply because there's a floor graphic there. So in what we're talking about stopping in a given area, that could be a kiosk where we want people to stop at a kiosk and interact with an automated system, a floor graph in front of a reception desk that says stop here to get your temperature taken. It's going into uh, putting this floor graphic in front of a product set, in front of a shelf, and saying, I need you to stop here and focus on this shelf item, this product, this POP signage. I need you to focus on where we're going with uh, the entire flow of the process. Are we going up one, one aisle and down another? And it's those floor graphics that impact on human psychology that creates this 280% increase in engagements with customers who see a floor graphic in a given area. It's a disruptive sign that is backed by studies. So when we look at, again, going into that human psychology of floor graphics, why it's so important in our new normal, whether it's safety signs or helping printers develop new value for their customers, study after study after study shows that floor graphics are one of the most impactful ways to get into the consumer mind. There's a national insecticide company. They're struggling with sales. They put down floor graphics in their big box stores. Their insecticide saw a 91% increase in sales volume. And that department store saw an 11.5% total increase in sales within the entire department. Um, another case study that I love to look at is a 64% increase in product engagement. So there's a well-known electronics company and they wanted people to pick up their electronic devices, to handle them, to play with them, to push buttons, see what was going on. And they were having a hard time getting people to do that. By putting down a simple floor graphic that guided people to that, they saw a 64% increase in that product engagement. That's more people picking up the device, that's more people handling it, touching it, making purchases based off those decisions. We're seeing some great opportunities for people to combine advertising and social distancing together. So obviously, as we look at the social distancing, people are worried about the, the six foot distances, but each one of those stickers is now an advertising opportunity for the store, for the brand, and for printers that are helping supply that material into the, the end users. One of my favorite studies has come from the real estate market. If you look at pre-pandemic levels, the real estate market was down 40% year over year. Coming out of the pandemic and as things reopen, people are changing the way they want to live. They're moving out of urban environments, they're buying real estate. And as of August, 2020, the real estate market is up 40% year over year. And the reason this is critical as we talk about disruptive signage is there's one thing that real estate agents love to do more than anything, and that is put their face on literally every sign they can. Right. If you look at a real estate agent, they want their face on things, they want their name, they want their number, they want people to know to call them. And so one of the most successful programs that we've seen to date with disrupting the way people do advertising is a social distancing program where the printer went to all the real, real estate agencies in the area and they said, look, what we want to do is let you sponsor the floor graphics for the local grocery stores. Each grocery store is going to need X number of hundreds of social distancing stickers over the course of the next three months. And if you are willing to sponsor those, we will put your name, your face, your contact information on that social distancing sticker. And we'll apply that social distancing sticker throughout the entire grocery store. So now every person in this area that's coming in is gonna see your real estate signage. That program has been so successful, they are backlogged for the next eight months in terms of producing floor signs for all of the real estate agents that have come out saying, I want to sp uh, sponsor these social distancing stickers. We look at other areas where it's disrupted the entire way people interact with stuff and floor graphics and floor shark. You know, the US Postal Service introduced a new automated teller machine and people still weren't using it. But by putting floor graphics down that guided people towards those automated teller machines, they were able to increase the usage in one month by over 11%. And again, it all comes back to that, that concept of we as people love to take in the environment that we come up from the floor up. It's a sign of safety for us. It's a sign of input. 
uh, that really sinks well with our brain and it's a focus point of attention. You know, you can see this in um, advertising. We look at it in hospitals, you know, people moving around hospitals and making decisions. You know, I need you to have a floor graphic here that divides uh, traumas into this section of the hospital. I need COVID testing over here. As schools and universities are opening back up, we're seeing them utilize floor graphics to help with social distancing, but also market themselves and their classes. Um, we're seeing a lot of people gamify the shopping experience, right? They're turning it into a game by taking that floor graphic and producing um, a numbering system or footprints to follow through the store. They're helping change the way customers interact with their store and guide them through in a better, safer way, but also into the products where they need to see increases in sales or they want to see more revenue being driven. So tell us quick, Dan, how, um, you know, how are floor graphics traditionally made today before Kern now, before floor shark? Traditionally, if I wanted to take advantage of any of these markets, right? If I wanted to get into that real estate signage, if I wanted to get into any of the social distancing signage, I would have produced this wide format. And if you've been in the wide format market, you've seen floor graphics in the past, you know, you produce it on a vinyl, Typically they produce it up to five foot wide. I produce a, a vinyl that has a very specialized adhesive for the floor. I print it. I then take that printed image over to my laminator and I apply a lamination system. So that could be a anti-slip laminate. It could be a textured laminate, but it becomes a two part process. Once that's done, I can then die cut out my shape. I can then take it in and apply it. But the whole process historically has been very slow. Wide format affords the opportunity to produce very large graphics but in the world we're seeing now, those large graphics are not what are driving customers, right? They're wanting smaller graphics in that 12 by 12 size. They want smaller graphics in that 10 by nine rectangle size. And so the wide format process has become very slow. It's become backlogged and watered down as, as customers are needing hundreds of these stickers. Wide format devices do a good job of producing large scale images but not large volume images in a short amount of time. If you look at, at studies in terms of wide format and what customers are wanting to do, one of the biggest trends that we're seeing, 78% of all customers reported they needed faster turn times from their print providers, especially when it comes to uh, some of these high demand items such as floor graphics. So we at Kernow decided we need to look at the two challenges that we're facing here. The first challenge is how do we speed up the process? And one of the ways to do that is to eliminate that lamination step. Lamination is a, a great product if I need something long-term durable, but if I need to get to the market fast, can I reduce that step? And that's where we developed Floorshark. So what's great about Floorshark is it has our proprietary shark skin technology that allows me to print directly to the material and without lamination still have all of my safety certifications and go straight to the floor. I can save all that lamination time. If I'm using a print process that needs to off gas, I don't have to worry about any of the off gassing issues. I don't have to worry about any of the delamination issues. You know, in one case study, we worked with a customer who went from a laminated system into our one part synthetic systems. And on one job alone, it saved them 40 hours of manual labor and they were able to deliver their print seven days faster to their customer. So when we talk about changing and disrupting the environment, um, changing and disrupting the markets that we're in, being able to deliver up to seven days faster is one of those great ways of doing that. And that's where we wanted to address challenge two. And challenge two was how do we help printers that don't have wide format technology and look at other print technologies as they try to develop into this new floor graphic market that's showing up. That's awesome. So, you know, there's a lot of um, dry toner devices out in the marketplace. So how do digital printers uh, take advantage of that, you know, the, the change from being able to run on wide format now down to dry toner. Absolutely. And, and that's one of the key area that we want to look at is how we get help those guys get into the market. As you touched to, dry toner is a huge market space. In fact, if you look at dry toner installation, it is the largest installation base of any digital finishing system on the market. And when we talk about dry toner, we're looking at everything from a fully fleshed out iGen 5 from Xerox, all the way down to a Lexmark multifunction machine. And when you look at that entire scope of installations, what you have is a print platform that nearly every printer has access to and every printer can produce very, very quickly. When you look at the opportunity that they have, again, we talk about the output systems. 
So from an inkjet perspective, if we do a, an inkjet print, I have the time to load the machine, I have to load the material, I have to print, I have to laminate, I have to finish it and die cut it out, and I've got scrap. With these toner systems, the opportunity that really sits for them is the ability to produce very high output very, very quickly. So when we take something like Floor Shark into a dry toner platform, we can run as high as 60 page per minute. So in the time that it takes to load a wide format inkjet roll, I could already have produced three dozen smaller graphics off of my dry toner system. My cost of production is now reduced, right? Because I don't have the same waste. If I'm needing to produce 12 inch stickers, I'm not wasting the edges off my rolls. I can produce a 12 inch floor graphic off of a 12 by 18 print sheet and reduce my overall waste. So my cost of production drops dramatically. More importantly for these toner guys, because Floor Shark does not require lamination, there's no additional capital investment for them. They can take a product like Floor Shark Dry Toner, go straight into their device, and go straight onto the floor after print without lamination. And we can do this on an on site management perspective. So if I'm a franchise, for instance, that has an entire fleet of these machines, I could roll out Floor Shark Dry Toner. I could take advantage of the Floor Shark market on my entire fleet of Ricos or Xerox or Canon devices without any additional capital investment for lamination. But most importantly, when we look at the dry toner market and the market that a lot of dry toner printers could take advantage of, it's the smaller floor graphics. There's a well-known beverage company out in the market and that well-known beverage company was trying to find ways to increase sales. And what they found was something as simple as a six inch floor graphic, six inch circle, put in front of all of their display cabinets, increased their sales by 17%. And this is the type of market that we wanna go after with things like Floor Shark as we look at the dry toner space. That's awesome. So there's a lot of um, options here then uh, for printers to now produce these floor, these floor graphics. So um, tell us a little bit about, um, you know, what do they need to know about it when they're purchasing Floor Shark material? We see it's R10 certified and all that. Um, tell us more about that side of it. Absolutely. So, so let's talk a little bit more about the Floor Shark dry toner specifically. What we've developed with this is the world's first anti-slip dry toner printable floor graphic product. It's the first product that I can take and run directly from my machine and apply straight to the floor. And I believe we've actually got a video that shows us running the material um, from start to finish and applying to the floor, if we could load up that video real quick. So what we see here is the Floor Shark for Dry Toner product. As I mentioned, it contains our proprietary shark skin technology. So if you feel that sheet, it already has a texture to it and it's already designed to go straight to the floor with the certified product. In this video, you can see we simply load it into the loading tray. It's now run into the Xerox press. And here in a minute, it's going to come out and we can go straight to the floor. And that's the beauty of Floor Shark Dry Toner. Once it comes out of the machine, it is already safety certified. It has all the slip ratings that I need. I can run it straight onto the floor and I don't have to worry about any additional processing. The other advantage to this as it comes out you can see that this material is perfectly registered every time. What we really wanted to focus on was creating a product that didn't have any of the distortion issues that traditional vinyls would have. If you looked at traditional flooring vinyl, once it came out, if it went through a system like this, it would be distorted, it would shrink. If I go to apply it to my floor, I risk distorting it during the application process. With this one, the polyester-based film is completely stable inside that dry toner environment, but it also allows me to put it down very easily without any damage to my graphic. Once it's down, it's extremely durable. It, I can walk on it, I can clean it, I can put floor scrubbers on it, and I don't have to worry about that damage. And so in this little two minute video, we've now created two floor graphics on the fly, straight out of a device, right onto the floor. That's what makes things like Floor Shark Dry Toner so powerful and so disruptive for customers that are wanting to get into that market. When we talk about things like the certification, you know, one of the things that we do talk about with customers is whether you use Floor Shark or anyone else's product, we want to make sure you're being safe. So with that, we have gone through the process of making sure we have R10 slip rating. We've made sure we have ANSI 137.1 slip rating and BFL S1 flame retardants. So that means if I go out with this product, I don't have to worry about international building codes. 
I don't have to worry about any liability from slips and falls. And that's the one thing I do caution people as they're working out, uh, make sure that they are, are looking for those certifications with any product they're testing. So, uh, you know, when we're working with these medias compared to traditional vinyls and that, um, what do we need to be aware of as far as uh, settings and whatnot? Absolutely. So, so when you run these, if you're used to running a traditional laser printer, you know, one of the things that a lot of customers think of is they think of the thickness of material. Uh, they enter their GSM, they're used to running things like a heavyweight cardstock. Keep in mind that when you're running things like the four graphic product, you absolutely have to make sure that you're taking into consideration the GSM. So while the material itself may not feel any thicker than a heavy cardstock, please make sure that your machines are set properly to the GSM. That's what gives you that great toner bondage. One of the things that we've really done and put a lot of effort into is building a database for our customers so that they have access to those machine settings as they need them. So we can provide those machine settings if they need them. If they need to look at the GSM rating of their systems, we can help walk through that. And if there's ever an issue with how do we get this to print on our specific machine, we have an entire technical team on hand that can help walk through that process. And you know, that video that you saw was shot this morning. That was uh, yours truly. Um, you know, printed off five sheets and stuck it to the floor there in under two minutes. So following Kern now's specs on my Xerox version 180 here in the office, um, was absolutely flawless not a one bad sheet, came out perfect the first time. So that's awesome product, Dan. Um, before we close here, what else do you see this is really exciting for us in our space that we can utilize these dry toner devices? Uh, what else, do, uh, what other materials is Kern now um, using um, for these devices? Absolutely, so, so again, what we wanna do is help printers find new ways of utilizing their existing technology. So we've gone into a lot of research on things such as our new ClearGuard product. So our ClearGuard product is a hard-coated, scratch-resistant protective film designed specifically for signage and splash screens so that you can create um, safe and effective signs that also hold up to solvents, bleaches, abrasive cleaning, everything else. We're working on antimicrobial uh, properties. So again, introducing that tactile feel. Um, customers that want signage that can be touched, that can be handled, we're working on antimicrobial systems so that they stay clean and safe. We get into things like metallics so that now customers utilizing these same devices can produce not only floor graphics, but also silver metallic effects, gold metallic effects with the material itself and not just an ink system. We get into vivids and brand color so we can produce very bright, vibrant color gamuts using the material and white ink and toner systems that you couldn't otherwise hit. And then lastly, we're working on things like our ClearVisor printable products. So now you've got a product that we can take ClearView and ClearVisor and not only have a safety screen that wraps around something like a cash register, but we could actually print the logos on there. We could print uh, contact information, whatever the customer may need. So for us, it's all about differentiating into specialized synthetics that help printers deliver new value to their customers. That's awesome, Ben. I think that you know gives us a lot of latitude here when we're trying to um encourage printers to see new, seek new markets, new products, and new revenue streams. Uh, the current now line is just simply amazing as far as the versatility and what you guys are doing with it. So uh, with that, I think we're going to move on to the next session, Dan, but thank you so much. If anybody else is uh, interested in the current now products, um, Scandicore is proud to be a, a partner of current now. Reach out to us or reach out to Dan directly. So thanks again, Dan. Thank you guys. Everyone have a great day. Thank you. Take care.